Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You feeling good? good? Yes. Ooh, well, I mean, crispy. like I was just saying, like my butt is sore. I want you to know the opening clip is just gonna be, I want you to know my butt is sore. Yeah. That's it. Let's go home. It's a good opening. No, no, con no context, no anything. That's where it's gonna end. I saved that for you, Jeremy, right when I sat down. Cheers. Cheers. It's guys episode, man. Guys night. <laughs> Watson nine, mansplain edition. Yes, that's right. Okay, to Lauren. Thank you, Lauren, we miss you. Okay. Oh, you look how stressed you are. Uh, Cause dude, I'm not, I'm not a much of a whiskey guy. Ooh, pretty good. Oh, you hate it. Oh, he hates it. He hates it. The face says nothing but, oh, there's a lot left. <sighs> You're, wait, okay, you drink whiskey how often? I used to often, 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 probably too often. You, I, I feel like you take pride in like the whiskey okay. routine. You're that type of man. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with it, but I feel like- What do you feel like? Okay, well, I, I think it's funny that <laughs> in the world, <laughs> during the holiday season- My girlfriend's gone and I got it. I think it's funny. Keep going. Um, I think it's fun. This isn't like on you. It's more about like men culture, how much they want, how would I say? How much the gifting industry wants to make it seem like men want whiskey. We yes. want whiskey things. Mm -hmm. Like if you go, when you're checking out at a store, they, they have a book that's like the men's field guide to whiskey book. Trust me, as a man, as, I don't know if I'm speaking on behalf of all men, I don't want that book. I don't want it. Oh, this was forged in the the wilderness um, with with good oak and 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 I don't know bourbon. I w just whiskey. I wish we had get like this in your mustache. a whiskey sponsor for this week as you were just acting. Listen, I just think um you get to the checkout, you don't know what you're getting, you get that gift. It's like what your aunt gives you. Because it's like a you like whiskey. Yes, yeah. like a whiskey sampling kit. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want it. I mean, I love whiskey. I don't want that. Right. But also the things that I love the most, I'm usually like, no, I'll, I'll get that. I, I'll, I get the one that I like. Well, if you're into it, then you like it. Did this happen because someone gave you a gift and then it really imprinted you that I'm going to become a whiskey guy? No, well, when you, so I did, I, when I, because I grew up in Northern Illinois and I went to school in Kentucky. And Kentucky like loves three things. It's like bourbon, basketball, and Jesus. That's it. Uh -huh. like, and so this was when I got down there with my like, you know, vodka, whatever the fuck. Like, no, nah, I'm gonna bring that down here. And three years later, it's all I would, Matt looks at this glass as if it like, insulted know. his grandmother. I, I, you, cause you look so cool. I looked over there, you look like J Don Draper. Really? Yeah, you look like you are killing okay, it. What's funny way. is you say Don Draper. When I moved out to LA, however long ago, I have never drank more whiskey consistently than when I was watching Mad Men. Oh yeah. Cause all they do is rip cigarettes and drink whiskey all day. I smoked a lot of cigarettes in my life when I was watching Mad Men. I just I feel saw like it. Mad Men made me smoke cigarettes more in college. Not just cigarettes. <laughs> what kind of cigarettes? Lucky Strikes. I mean, <laughs> Lucky Strikes. Oh, American Spirits. <laughs> I oh, Lucky Strikes. I, for a second, I thought you were like doing a quote from Mad <laughs> no, Men like, where I'm like, no, no, you're no, like, it's not. There's a special kind of guy that drinks American not, Spirits or that smokes American Spirits. It's a very special guy. This it's guy. you. It was it's me. It, yes, I, I, I was saying I used to smoke yellow American spirits and when he had yellow Pacificos, I go, that was my thing. I would buy the yellow American spirits. Somebody and else so, who's listening goes, I really resonate with that. Yeah, Somebody I just else. wanted like the matchy matchiness of it. By the way, you look great. No, go, ahead. go ahead, just do it. Right I right. look great you the look, way I am. Yes, you do. I think you look great. <laughs> I think you look fantastic. Smooth, smooth. Your story actually, if I remember correctly, was one of the more stories that I feel like resonated with people that we keep getting questions about later. Of just like, hey, is Matt, um, or like, well, I, would you have Matt back on to talk about this part of what he said or this part of what he said? Cause like you did the thing that I feel like a lot of guys say they wanna do, but they never actually follow through. And like, you know, you, you work hard and the relationship ends up working because you're like, I'm just gonna continue to put my ego right here and just wear my heart on my sleeve. And maybe you'll eventually oh, pay yeah. time or Certainly. some attention to you. Yeah, it was great. So, um, and everything's still good, I assume? Yes, oh my gosh, great. Oh my God. Great. Oh, these are, oh my God. Oh, give them to me. And it's okay. And also just discretion. I don't know all the answers. These are just my opinions. Oh, no one and knows the answers to take these. Take them with a grain of salt. All right. But this is just how I see it. I want to start with a layup and something that's super easy and just okay. kind of get into some things. So you gotta remember, this is one of the only times where there's, there's no female energy in the room. It's two guys. Yeah. So <laughs> for all 17 of you that are still here, I appreciate that. But 
I also think that there's an answer that I feel like if Lorem is sitting here, not that we wouldn't say the same thing, we might delve into some things a little bit deeper than- Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, um, I think this is like a funny one that like I've seen like nine times in a row, but like advice with dating apps. Did you ever use dating apps? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, but I never went out on a date from a dating app. So what, okay. Why? I think the reason why was because I honestly was like too scared and nervous to do it. Mm. And I think there was a little bit of like hesitation and fear about, does this person know who I am? Cause yeah. with the social media following, sometimes I like, I would see the girl, I really liked her. We were having good conversation and I would go to her Instagram and she was following all of my friends. Ooh. And I go, well, this is sure gonna make her night when I bring her around and she's gonna meet the entire vlog squad. Yeah. So that always kind of made me like a little hesitant. Um, but I, it, dating apps still, I think are good. And I'm all for people like going out on like good yes. safe dates with people, putting yourself out there. I mean, I know people who've found, sorry, I'm burping. Rip it out. I, I'm terrible at burping. I just like <laughs> swallow it it's and okay, then it will know, come out on its own time. It's all right. Listen, hey. On your time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I'm all for it, but um, I think it's a really great confidence booster um, to start putting yourself out there and knowing that, hey, this person found me attractive. Mm -hmm. I found them attractive um, and we had a good conversation. Therefore, I should go out into the night and have the confidence to go up to somebody, not hit on them and be a total creep, but have the confidence that you are desired. You are a desirable person because sometimes life can get really, really dark and you uh, you really start to um, loathe yourself and don't think that you are the person that you once were, especially after a breakup. You're like, well, if this person doesn't wanna be with me, then nobody wants to be with me. Uh -huh. It's good to get yourself back on the feet, back on your feet, and start talking to people. And it's just a great habit because breakups are tough. Your mind keeps reeling. You want to think about that person again. The moments those thoughts come back, yo, get on a dating app. Even if you're not going to be these people, you will not find the love of your life in that moment. Who cares? Start having fun. See all the different types of fish in the sea. Yep. It's fun. Well, like, first off, Lauren and I knew each other and still reconnected on a dating app. So there's that. Oh. So it's like, even if you, I feel like sometimes it just like gives you, like, I knew who she was, but, and she knew who I was, but I didn't know she was single. Cause when I knew her, she was in a relationship and everything. So we're like, without dating apps, we wouldn't be together. That kind of happened with me, really? actually. Yeah, I found out someone was like single again right. through the dating app. We didn't message that much, but I was like, oh, oh. oh. And then we kind of got to talking and like went out on dates. So yeah, they're good. There's, I, I, especially like a huge city you don't know one in. Sometimes you just need a little bit like of warm up. Just like, I'm gonna talk to someone in this city. Oh, you would do cities? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, no, yeah. no, the city I'm in. Uh, oh, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, you, yeah. Would, you would go, oh, I know. It's, oh, but I'm saying like, if you went to like Chicago for like a business trip, oh. you would die. Well, if I did that, that, that was really more for more of a transactional type of thing. I really wasn't worried in the city. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Actually, but like, also when I'm like traveling, I'm not thinking about it, swiping in an app. That's like the last thing. Right, I know, because by the time you're really gonna find that match, you're you're out of town. You know, you have that friend that gets to a new town and just starts swiping. I I have I had 17 of those friends. Right, you would just get somewhere and you're like, what are you doing? I'm just, oh, I'm just going like, through it. Not even there yet. Like we're on the plane there. I'm like relax, <laughs> big guy. Okay. Well, so you said something actually that like was so interesting. Do you think that guys don't want to admit when they're sad about relationships? Like when they're in one? In 2000, no, 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 like when they're out of one, right? Like, do you, like, why do you think guys are so like, no, it doesn't bother me. No, I'm not going to allow you to know that I'm sad. No, I'm not gonna like show anything besides just how like, how manly I am. Well, one, I wish, <laughs> there's a quality to that where I wish I was like that. Really? I can't identify with that. Okay, and, but you know that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I do know that type of guy. And sometimes, and I can see it in like my friend's eyes when they're coming out of a breakup. I'm like, are you okay? And they're like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I don't care. I'm like, you know, it's okay to be sad. And like, what, what, when did we learn this thing to like, like just, no, 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 you're fine. I, oh, well, I, I think I blame it on that person's, I don't, it's, it's hard for me to like critique other people's like home lives right. and where that comes from, but a lot of it does. And I think sometimes it's uh, the lack of having a, uh, um, not a father, like a fatherly figure, just mm -hmm. another masculine figure in their life who say, you know, it's okay to express your emotions because it's yep. good. The more that bottles up inside of you, 
it's going to come out in really unhealthy ways in your life. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know, it's, I don't think it's really cool. If you, if your buddy you can tell is like, uh, I don't know, struggling through it. You shouldn't like put them on blast in front of like all your friends and being like, like, like no, guys do. Are you, it's, are you, you know, I can tell you're upset. No, I, I really can. No, it's the best friends that I have right now in my life. I knew were really good when I was going through my breakup yep. is ones who reached out to me and they knew how bad it gets. And they said, anytime you need to talk to somebody, my door is always open, you know, but did it like privately, privately. Exactly. And it, that meant so much. And because of learning that I'm like that to all of my friends friends and mm -hmm. stuff like, yeah, I'm a big, uh, I'm like, it's like people in AA have their sponsor. Like Seriously? I love being a breakup sponsor. Like you're going to get through breakup this. Breakup spots. That's a great name for a podcast. Bro. Yes. Breakup sponsor. That'd be a great podcast. Mm -hmm. What's funny is I, you say the whole, like the, 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 the family life thing. I think it's funny because my mom being a single mom, it's not so much as that. I don't think I had a dad that makes me feel like I put this, um, this like armor on. It's that I think she always wanted to look like everything was okay around me. And oh. I, I watched that, which good intentions, right? She doesn't want to see, like, she doesn't want me to see when she would be sad, when she would be upset. But through that, I think it almost kind of teaches you as a kid, not to, it's her fault, but just like, hey, uh, you got to be strong no matter what, and you can be strong. So it's okay. Versus like, mom's sad. Yeah. It's just, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about that until you said that. That's so interesting. And so wait, how do you kind of operate though? Like, oh, I act like nothing's wrong and uh -huh. when I'm dying inside. And then, yeah. Yeah. And do you like focus something to like occupy your time? And, I then, am, and then sometimes that anger comes out and during that thing. I am, I will obsess over something to keep my attention away from all the things that I probably should be thinking through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can sense not, I've never, been, we don't hang out enough for me to sense R that energy, but I sense it so much from certain people in my life. I'm Fixers. not going to put their names no, out there, but to. like, but I care. It's my like empathetic side where I'm like, are you okay? But like, I'm not trying to get in their head thinking I have all the answers, but I right. genuinely care. And I can sense when someone's energy is just off. I, people, I, I, maybe we're getting better at it. Maybe we're getting worse. I don't know. I think we are getting better at yeah. it culturally. Yeah. I think now more than ever, I think there's more access to resources and safer spaces and yeah. people are more empathetic to other people's mental health. Than if they're not, to be. I'd like to think that at least the internet gives enough of information out there to see that that is available. Yeah. Right. And it's also good. Like it's also good. Like the guy on guy support too, when you're going through it and also having another friend who's a girl who's like your friend who has that kind of female perspective is so important too. Yep. Like I think so many of these girls that I talked to after my breakup who helped me get through it. Mm -hmm. Like that was really good too, to also have that feminine support and perspective. So you fully believe that guys and girls can have platonic like relationships when they're both single. Uh, yes, okay. I, yes, I completely agree. I go, I, I, I've struggled with that in the past. Uh, I feel like I, as I get older, it's mm -hmm. getting tougher, and that truth really? I think is becoming more apparent. Well, like, oh, see, I'm the opposite. Yes, I've tons of girls who are my friends, but I think that's also the industry I work in. Like, we're creators and we're creative partners and yep. stuff. And I always wonder if we were in a different profession, would that be the same thing? Yeah. Well, it's like look, when I was younger, and I think it was just I was just like a, a and to. to also shed a little bit of light on like the fact that like dudes do change. I just think I was so insecure in my own self that I was constantly looking at everything to make sure that my, my ego that was so incredibly sensitive was just like getting fed. And I think even when I wouldn't even like have gone to a situation where like, oh, I think she's attractive. I'm interested in her. It's just like that my, my brain would just constantly play this game of like, I wonder if she is attracted to me. Oh, uh, But see, like I said, now that I'm getting older, I don't feel that way at all. And, I, and obviously I'm in a relationship, but even beyond that, like the times that I felt like some girl did like me, I'm like, oh God, I gotta, I have to put space between me now. I don't because I'm like, I'm worried because like she's going to make a move on me, but like, oh, I don't want this to work. I gotta get over here. Oh no, no. yeah. Yeah. Well, once a girl like express interest in me, like I'm oh, talking past tense. But we're talking, this, this is a very tense, special episode. And yes. I didn't have those feelings, then it was like done. Well, then we right. really it can't go forward. And, but have you ever had a friendship with a girl yeah. Who you were super cool with. Yeah. It started to catch feelings for you. You did not reciprocate, but you really wanted to keep the friendship. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. There were times where like, 
we caught vibrations that like, is there something here? But we realized we we're better being friends. No, I'm saying one way, one way. So she, you can, you can tell she kind of likes you. Oh, but you, I'm not. No. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. That's yeah. Tough. That's tough. Yeah, totally. But I, yeah, no, I'm friends with like many, many girls, but I think it's different than a lot of other guys. Like I think like how many other girls are you talking to in your phone that aren't Lauren that you're just like chatting for fun with? Well, now none, because I feel like my phone is filled with just like work bullshit. But like that aside, I feel like I talk to Lauren's friends often, I, but it's all transactional and like on a social like, post. Like I'll see them post something and like, especially like a close friend and I'll just comment back to something. We'll have two or three exchanges okay. and we're out. Yeah. Like I talk to Carly and mm -hmm. like Mariah, but they're all in relationships, but right. we have just these similar senses of humor and we have to talk a lot. Yeah. Actually, I don't feel like I talk to like a lot of single girls though. So maybe not. I have a hard time with it when we're not actually really close. Okay. So like if I'm super close with somebody, all good. Right. When I'm not super close with somebody, you're like, I've only met them once or twice. And really we know each other on the internet more than we know each other in person. I feel like I've been burned enough to that I put something there that doesn't need to be there. It's just like, I don't know, it's just, I'll, I'll ah. just say, cause like, I don't want, cause this is what I don't want. I don't want them to think a joke that I said is out of context and then show somebody else that. And then that starts this big old game of telephone. Uh -huh. It goes back like, well, you know what Jeremy said? I'm just like, I did say that. Why would that be a problem? Right. What? <laughs> I get what you, I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's this weird, and maybe it's an LA thing, but I think it's also just like around the world of just like, People constantly, I mean, it's hard to tell what people mean over text. A screenshot without any context or knowing the friendship is also really hard to, to like to dissect and know what's oh, going on. Yeah. And like add a little bit of sarcasm or even just like someone that just didn't say something well. And it's like that thing now drives a wedge between people that would have otherwise been friends. Mm -hmm. Too much drama. Too much. Okay, so it, in that same vein, uh, you said, um, okay, how do you feel about girls shooting their shot? Uh, go for it. Go for it, but you know, like, <laughs> you go, it, give me an example of a girl shooting her shot. To me, well, I think the, and, and I, if I can tell the context, of course, going back to that, I can tell she's like, it's okay for guys to shoot their shot, but how about girls? Yeah, go for it. I feel the same but way. But always expect rejection, like, but. What? Not, Matt? But I'm just saying like all, <laughs> have a sense of humility about it. Like, okay. I don't care. Like every girl that I ever approached Ooh. in the past, I knew, hey, it's either not gonna work or it's gonna work. So who cares? Yeah, because bold. that's how you gotta nurture yourself though. I just don't like when I hear questions like that, I'm like, yeah, go shoot your shot, but just be prepared. Anything can happen, but don't make that. I don't want to feed anxiety because of that. Yeah. But you got one life to live, shoot your shot. Well, also like- And honestly, guys are so freaking shy these days. Like really? I, I, sometimes I have to st step outside of myself because like I'm like a confident person and I was a confident person when I'm single. I think I handled it well. A lot of guys are way too scared. And a lot of times guys are settling for girls that aren't even, I think that great really? sometimes. Oh, because, I think guys because constantly they, punch above their weight. I think they just said yes to the guy, to the first girl that was like, I like you. And he's like, well, this is going to save me a lot of time. That's I like hilarious. you. So yeah, go and shoot your shot. Because I think a lot of times guys say yes. And they're going to be like, thank gosh, a girl's interested in me. Because they oh, really- the opposite. Really? You think oh, the I, opposite? I constantly see dudes with girls that I'm like, you are intelligent. You have so much going for you. You are amazing. That dude sucks. Why are you with him? You can do better. I feel like Lauren and I always constantly like the, the bar is on the ground. Well, if she wants to shoot, if she, she's the one who's shooting your shot, true. then pick them right. All, well, true. We're, we're all pro picking them right. I was like, you're right. I feel like guys constantly, like when they do shoot their shot, will go and shoot their shot with something way. I've just, I mean, just like, dude, like that, you thought that was going to work. What's going on? Whereas the girl's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll keep it safe or whatever. You're right. They should go shoot the shot with whatever they feel good. Yeah. 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 Knowing that it could go wrong. Do you ever like, did you ever like size up um, a girl that you were interested in? Like before you really try to shoot your shot and go, okay, like scrolling back to see what type of guys she's dated in the past okay. and seeing, this, can I compete with this? Ooh. Am I this type of guy she would be interested in? Because if you're that much of kind of a creep I am, that's a good sense. But some guys switch it up. They go from one different type to a whole different type. Some guys wow. stick with the same type. Okay, that okay. I think this is a fascinating topic because I don't think guys talk about creeping on girls' profiles, despite the fact that they all do enough. Yes. Oh, this so is yeah. let's double right on back into that. Uh -huh. So are you more jealous if you see 
someone right before, during a close, whatever, like that is very similar to you. And it could be you. And you're like, you can see all the things you're like, uh, uh, or something completely, a, a completely different type of guy does something completely different. You would never be able to be that guy, but you're also different than that guy. Like which, which one drives you crazier? Oh, I, f I, what drives me, ah, I think it has to be like there. I'm, I'm looking for some quality right. that I don't have uh -huh. that that person has mm -hmm. that makes them more appealing than me, you know? Why are we like that? I don't know. Like I get, I used to get crazy to the point where like, I need to see this person talk. Yeah. Like I need to see a video of this person well, especially being themselves. No, no, no. You say talk because you're good at it. Oh, okay. Yes, I guess so. But like, you want to see them do the thing that you're good at. <laughs> but like, do you ever like see when like some criminal gets convicted of a huge big crime? You're like, oh, I, I want a video of them talking. Like oh, I want to see that person. Not at all, but that's speak. fascinating. But like, I just need to know who is this person because our imagination can go so far and deep and create this crazy pictures you know, it's of funny. them. I just want to like get their energy. I, <laughs> Lauren and I talk about this all the time. When we watch UFC and you watch some dude beat the living hell out of some other guy for 20 minutes or whatever. And it's just very barbaric. I mean, it's not that far from the, like the Roman Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And the, the interview afterwards is, well, the game plan was interesting. We can't, and it's just like, it's so eloquent. It's well said. They're very well, <laughs> and I'm just like, I guess not that I expect them to just be like, mm, we went well, I guess. Like they're just so well-spoken. Yeah. Especially some of the ones who English isn't even in their first language. Uh -huh. They're speaking their second, third, fourth language. And they have a full story arc to how like the whole thing went down. And you're like, Oh it makes my you God. angry. You're like, like, what? Yeah. Just dripping in blood, six pack. Drink, dripping in somebody else's blood too. Full complete sentences. Right. It's, yeah, How dare you? You're so right. Just yeah. the, watching the way that someone would present themselves on camera, stage presence, all that shit. And then of course, tying it back to, they're more of a man than me. Oh my yeah. God. Like, and God. it's good we're talking about this. Cause like, it is. you know, like we're all honest. We're all a little bit of creeps. We want to, we like sizing people up. We're, compet we're a competitive species, you know? I, isn't it weird that the human brain, despite not wanting to do math, is constantly doing math? But I also worry about the women then what in this mean? situation. Okay, I don't, want, I don't know. Then, then I it, it breaks my heart thinking about like the idea of like a girl, if you're interested in this guy, and then you're going to be comparing yourself to the last girl that he's dated and stuff. One of the biggest lessons that I learned in my last relationship, because it, I'm not kidding, the shit that came out at the end was a reflection of shit I said week two, you know, four or five years earlier. And it was even just like the color hair of my ex-girlfriend, the this of my ex-girlfriend, the this of my ex, my ex, ex whatever, right? Yeah. And it was like, holy shit. And by the way, half the things that were, were like brought up, I was like, I don't even feel that way. <laughs> but I did say something that was then misinterpreted the other way. And that's now haunted this poor person for years. Oh. Uh, and vice versa. The things that I would think about, I'm like, well, I know what that said at one point, like that one thing. But what somebody says in passing once because of a memory that is kind of a part of them or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean that one that that's like the law. And especially when you bring things up like that and they're like, oh, why would you, I don't even remember saying that. And our immediate response is, yes, you do. Or I remember it, no, you're lying. And it's like, no, maybe like we genuinely have made this the biggest production in our minds. Uh -huh. And it was a pilot that never actually got picked up. Yeah. Seriously. And that, oh, it's, it's insane, but no, you're right. Bombas' mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. When you buy Bombas, you're giving to someone in need. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Seriously, Telly's, their stuff is so incredibly soft, seamless, tagless, and has a very, very cozy feel. Coming from the self-titled cozy queen herself, I can confidently say that Bombas pieces pass the test. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere, which schmear. makes them schmear with the schmear, makes them the perfect cozy winter layers. I know we live in LA and our version of cold is very warm to others, but it still gets a little chilly here, believe it or not, sometimes. And um, I'm actually currently packing to go to Canada tomorrow. And you best believe that every single pair of my Bombas socks are coming with me. Did you know socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items in homeless shelters? That's why Bombas donates for every item you buy. So far, Bombas' customers, like you, have helped to donate over 50 million items of essential clothing. Go to bombas.com slash wild and get 20% off any purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash wild for 20% off. Bombas.com slash wild. 
What's up, female tillards? This one is for you. Long gone are the days where you had to make a trip to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy to get a refill on your birth control. If you're on birth control, remembering to renew your prescription and taking your pill every day is already enough work. Well, the Pill Club is here to help. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA approved brands. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 per month without insurance. The Pill Club delivers birth control to your door for free in discreet packaging, along with fun self-care gifts and goodies. I have had so many friends and family members join the Pill Club and it has just taken away all of their worries about having to remember to pick up the prescription from the pharmacy. Skip the office visits and waiting in lines at the pharmacy and join the club. Right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash wild, the pill club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every wild till nine listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash wild to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember the pillclub.com slash wild. You must use the link to make a donation. Uh, Oh, Matt, dropping the good truth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's some good ones here. All right. We'll we'll, we'll come out of dating for a moment to say, what career growth advice would you tell your 25 year old self now? Oh, buy Bitcoin. Sorry. (laughs) Um, so, and you're about to turn 30 as well, right? Yes. When's your birthday? Uh, July 9th. Okay. Yeah. A couple of- Turning 30. Gonna be, this is going to be our year. Yeah. This is going to be us. I know. Dirty 30. I, I always thought Forbes 30 under 30 was really going to happen. And I uh, don't, have, have you been on Forbes 30 under 30? I have not. Okay. And <laughs> this last year has really put it into perspective in the sense that it's the first year where I've been like, I almost, I almost feel good about some things that I have not gone out of the way to talk about that I've done. Cause they're, they're coming back tenfold in, in the circles and the conversations when it matters. Yeah. And it used to be, I feel like the exact opposite way. We're like, I need to make sure that everyone knows every good thing that I do. And now it's like, oh my God, if, if more people know about this, then they're going to want more of that. And then I'm gonna have to find time for that. I'm like, no, 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 we'll keep it under wraps. People uh-huh. that need to know that need to know that that's it. That was my long spiel. That do you want to be on board is, 30 30? Uh, well, No, not anymore. Right. I, I, I'm kind of throwing in the towel. Yeah. Uh, but my 25 year old self would, oh. would uh, if they were talking to me, they would be like, did that Forbes 30 under 30 thing pan out like we thought was going to happen? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what career advice I would give to, well, I'm trying so to think of what, what I was doing, doing at yeah, 25. 25. Cause I can say right now, uh, young, broke, could, didn't know what he was doing, was really upset, was really sad, didn't really know what he wanted to do in life at all and was struggling. Right. Um, and by the I way, can't remember I'm, during I'm, my life what I was doing at 25. I mean, I'm 29 now. That was four years ago. I think I was either, I had just been, I probably, let's say I was heartbroken and I was at the lowest of my low. I, I was heartbroken the lowest of my low at 25. Yeah. Wow, look at us. I feel like I did what I needed to do though. It's hard for me to get that advice. I'm glad that I took time. I didn't try to, I, looking back, I'm like, I could have made more content. I could have really pushed it, but I was unhappy. And I didn't want to force myself to do something to convince myself I was happier. Yep. And I didn't want to force happiness on myself. So looking back, like I'm so proud of everything I've done. Looking up, I just say to keep doing what you're doing and work, keep working out more. More. Keep working out more? More. Yeah. Just get that get that bot a little I, bit more solidified. I would just tell them, hey, when when you start to get happy again, could you could you stay in shape yeah. and not just continue to be a lard every time uh-huh. you got happy? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think like, and I'm right with you, the worst things that I've done, the terrible like all though I wish that I could go back and, and do it in a way that might not have impacted other people as much. But everything that was the worst part of what I learned, I think is the only reason that I've had any amount of success today. Yeah. And not even that. I know what to do with that success. I feel like I have like more advice for like my younger self at 25. It's like, I still feel like I'm 25, you know? I, in, a, in a way, it's funny. I still feel like I can go out and have a good time and feel young, younger almost than the people I feel like that are either my age that I work with or are a little bit older and are, and then have kids or don't have kids. Like, ah, I don't wanna do that anymore. It's like, no, I still wanna do these things. But at the same time, I don't have the internal unhealthy burning desire to go seek it out. Yes, same here. I feel like I've I've done a lot of like this social stuff that you get done in your 20s. So like looking yep. back, I'm like, I, done, I did the damn thing. I didn't miss out on anything and I'm excited for the new chapter. I'm sad though, 
that that chapter is coming. Yeah. Why? And I, I'm just sad. What? Why? I think it's just going to be sad, like the shift in routine of things, like the people that I have in my life and like the, the vlog squad, it's so much fun. Like yeah. we are a huge, crazy big family that I love and that I hate and that I enjoy yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. And you know, there's always that quote from what, like Andy Bernard from the office where he says, you know, the one thing about the good old days is that you wish someone, I'm butchering this quote, someone you wish no, someone- No, no, we gotta look it up because it's so good. Wait, yeah, it's something about like, but I think it, it applies yes. very well to what we're talking about right now. E equal, I have that damn euphoria soundtrack stuck in my head, y'all. It's a great show. Equals MC squared. Oh my God, I, Andy Bernard, and it's good old days comes afterwards. Oh, damn. Whoa. What is the quote? Andy Bernard, The Office, and you haven't watched it, uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Um, he says, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've left them. Damn. See? And you know what? I think about that quote every week. And so I think my advice to anybody who in your, who, to anybody who is in your 20s, does not even make sense? I feel like. No, if you're in your 20s. If you're in your 20s, think about that quote. I think about that every week. And that's what makes me happy looking as being 30 is because during all of it, I was like aware. I This really? sounds like very like, I don't know, narcissistic where you're like, no. I was present. I lived it. But I truly, I truly soaked up every moment of it, of the good old days. And you know what? We're still in the good old days. By the way, we are. But at the same time, I feel like 30 and maybe it's just because it's a round number that starts in like whatever it is. I don't know if it's because I'm, I feel like I've learned enough about where I'm at today to know that I can do better. That makes me think about wanting to change or this or that. Or I genuinely am ready to put some things behind. Like, I don't know. Oh yeah. I can't really, I, I, and then we'll see when I hit 30. Uh -huh. but like all of my goals for 30 are things that, I, you know what it is as well when you have enough success to not worry about, is rent gonna be able to be paid? And am I gonna have enough money to eat without going into more credit card debt? You have more time to think about things like, hey, uh, is my diet what it needs to be? Or, hey, am I reading a book at all this month? Yeah. Or, hey, are you gonna make time to call your mom? Mm -hmm. Or are you just gonna let it go another day? Another I need to day, call my mom week? more. I need to call my mom more. How often do you talk to your mom? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Like, yeah, I I feel like I text my mom like same pretty often, but I don't feel like she wants to talk to me that much though. Okay. My mom's not much of like okay. A, I'm gonna say a thing and you're gonna go fuck. What? I feel the same way. I felt I felt the same way, and I saw my mom not but a couple months ago for the first time since like COVID began, and I was like, I said something along the lines of like, yeah, but like you know, uh, you don't text me anyways. It's all good. Like, and I, I made a joke about that, and I was like, it's all good. We talk enough. And she goes, I don't want to text you because I never want to make you feel like you need to talk to me. Damn, and that's, I was like, that's exactly what my mom probably thinks. Fuck, Jeremy. Yeah. So that's the shit that I'm like, I should work on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I think that's very similar and accurate to my parents where they think, yeah, they don't want to make it seem like, I don't know, they're inconveniencing me. Like, like well, what? Like. No, the thing is, it's like, I'm down to talk. Usually the times when we do talk, we'll talk for hours hour and, a half. and they're the totally. ones that I, I, I talk to my parents until they usually want to hang up. So like, surprise me, we've, we've got plans. I don't, the thing is, I don't like quick chats. I like long, deep conversations. Yeah. I can talk to my parents for hours. I just like like 10 minute phone calls. I'm like, oh, it feels too sad. You and know? the thing that I'm, I'm really bad at, and I don't know how I'm gonna get better, better at it right now with like the schedule, the way that it is. I don't like transactional shit. Like I, I say that like, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and forth with one like Lauren's friends on Instagram because it's just funny. But when someone texts me and I know there's, when people text you on a holiday in particular, I can tell that the text is not, hey, give me a call, we'll, we'll catch up. It's like, happy new year. I hate, I hate those kind of texts. It's, it's not <sighs> that I don't appreciate that they thought Oh, I'll text him. But I can only imagine that person's going, copy, paste, yes. copy, paste, copy, yes. paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Yes. And there's now, of course, now there are, of course, some of my friends that like write up the full thing about why they cared about me this year. And then I'm like, okay, great. That's wonderful. I'll call you, whatever. This is wonderful. But I don't have any interest in me, like even responding to half the shit that I'm like, there's not, you don't, we don't you're not trying to catch up. Right. Well, what's that? Mm -hmm. We're real friends. We're not this friend. And that's also why half the time I feel like, Sometimes be like, wait, where have you been? What's going on? What's, like, what's great? I just haven't been posting on social media. I, it, I just do whatever I'm doing. I don't talk about it, but it still happens. Right. But in, I think in this world where we're supposed to constantly show and talk and, and like, it just, just 
almost publicize the things that we're involved in. If you don't, we just assume that it doesn't exist. Yeah. I, 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 I'm really curious about the people though, who do wish like our yeah. serial, like happy new year people. What, like, what is that thank from? Thank you. What's that from? Do you think that's like uh, they were just told to write their thank you notes as a kid or what? I have, good point. I, I don't know. I always want to follow up and be like, are you, how many people did you send this to? Right. Like, but like, and it also or like just the, the stupid gift meme. It's just copy to paste. It's like, uh, I don't know. I feel off, like they're just trying to could, work that you network. You couldn't possibly different. have thought this was for me. Cause it's not even that fun. <laughs> right? First off. And right. then second, but uh, I'm with you. I'm yeah. right with you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, oof. Oh, Matt, I'm going to like have a fucking think tank after you're out of here. Yeah. And my, and really, but the, you're right. The 25 year old me needed to be exactly where he was mm -hmm. sadly because it sucked. But I just wish, yeah, all I would want to say is like, give him some weird glimpse of the future for money just to be less stressed out. I, yeah, I say that, but then I'm like, nah, kid, you knew at the time, you knew it was going to be okay. That's why you were working. You weren't just working hard to work hard. You knew it was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Despite having no real, no real vision on how to fucking get there. We're going to cover everything that's serious about the two dudes never talk about. Um, what are your thoughts as a guy? Yeah. Right? And we want this from the guy's perspective, not just in general. From the guy's perspective, what are your thoughts on boundaries when you're in a relationship? Oh, good, good question. Um, well, okay, boundaries can yeah. go many different ways. Um, like what? Like, give me an example. To me, I think it's it's two things: it's boundaries with your significant other and the boundaries with everybody else. Oh, I have boundaries with everybody else completely. Right. Like, uh, I, I really value my own time. Right. Um, okay, then then talk about the boundaries with your girlfriend. Because I, I, I'm now thinking to myself, man, what boundaries do I set with her? I, 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 I mean, I try to structure my days in a way where like the addressing the boundary doesn't become an issue. Like, Ooh, you, that's you know, smart. You know what I mean? Like I try yeah. to structure my day and my time for um, us to work out our days equally. Like if it did become an issue, I would address it being like, no, I need this time right. to work on myself. And I've had that in past relationships too, where, um, you know, I've been in a relationship and like, oh, let's go like uh, shopping right now. And I'm like, we got to treat this day like it is a nine to five. And I know I get to work from home and do this like social media stuff, right. but I need to like focus on me. Um, and I always just try to compare it to like, let's just try to picture as if this weekday is a nine to five and let's just try to use these hours on focusing on us and not just using it completely recreationally. Right. Um, but yeah, it's weird as I never like articulate boundaries. I just kind of like right. sense them on my own in, in my own head. Yeah. Like, like sometimes I'll come home and like Zane and Todd are like really wanting me to hang out and spend time with them. But I just know that in my time i i'm gonna go be by myself and they can beg and plead me all they want but i'm like no those are my boundaries yep. and I, I my 25 year old self didn't know about boundaries no. i thought you had to please everybody and when i learned about them i was like oh oh my gosh i don't have to respond or engage to a lot of uh things that i don't want to in my life but obviously it's important in your relationship <sighs> boundary. I'm really trying to think of like good examples of like times where I've had to address boundaries in the relationship, with Patricia and I's relationship. Um, I mean, it's good that you don't have to like, I guess it'd be two options. One, if you had a very, I, I've already thought about this, this, that makes sense. Or you haven't thought about it. That probably is the most natural. Right. I think sometimes it's been, cause you have a weird schedule. Maybe she has, there's been instances with like maybe her friends where she like wants me to go to this thing, obviously important to be like as her boyfriend. But yep. then when I look at it and I go, I don't really see my like place here in this. Like I've, if it was a different occasion where like we were really sitting down, if it was like a dinner, that's no problem, but yep. I'm not gonna go kind of like spend <laughs> my work day to go hang out and entertain these people. Yep. And that's a tough conversation to have. It's weird, but you know what? <coughs> it would, hindsight, you do it, you're not in a good mood. You don't bring the person that she wants to be brought to the occasion anyway. And then you're you're actually being a dick. You know what I mean? Like you have a bad attitude about it. It would be better if you're like, hey, I'm so sorry. I have a thing I have to do. And I don't mean to like prioritize like over you, but like let's spend time together. But this isn't something I want to put my like daytime toward. Yeah, like, exactly. We should say that, but we don't want, like we just don't think to. Yeah, and I think, uh, but Patricia has her own boundaries and I'm very mindful of them. So mm, yeah. 
It kind of works both also, ways. I think guys, sometimes I think we, well, that's the thing. What are your thoughts on boundaries? Uh, I haven't really thought about them. Probably where we're just weak. Yeah. And also I think as bold people who don't get so worried about certain things and I, I and like, I hear my other friends talk about like, well, I was just nervous about this. And I'm like, I've never been nervous about that in my entire right. life. That's probably something that we probably actually have a lot of work to do on boundaries and we don't even realize it. Yeah, we do. Shit. I, yeah, it's hard to articulate it, but inside I just have it all the time. Like well, I've had certain friends, they'll text me for mm -hmm. certain things and in, it may seem like I'm ghosting them, but I'm just like, what well, you're asking and what this is, is just my boundary. And I'm like, nope. Yeah, well, nope. and it's funny because Lauren loves my like corporate schedule because it, it, it creates boundaries for her. Okay. She always talks about the fact that like, she never really used to have weekends when she was dating other influencers or in, in like old relationships, because Friday's the same as Saturday, same as Sunday is Monday, but like I'm off work on Saturday. Yeah. I'm not off work on Monday. And so she has a week because I have a week. And you get to enjoy the times that right. you do have with one another. Right. So oh there's a bit of like a routine. That's my biggest thing. I've got to figure out how to spend more time with her this year. I know, same here, because like Patricia and I, like we always talk about, oh, we need a date night, we need a date night. But then something, it's always somebody's birthday in the middle of the week that fucks it up. Or there's some huge national football championship game on and we have to go to that. But I'm like, that's what you want, babe. That's what you want. Like, I mean, if that's what she wants, that's what she wants. Yeah. It is, but like, I am the problem in that in this part of the relationship. She is so much better about scheduling her week out to do the things that makes her like soul happy socially. And I don't, I'm terrible at that. I, I, you're, you're at balancing work and saying you're done work, even if there's more to do, because what's my priority, her. But the problem is what's my priority? I need to take care of my shit at work so that I can take care of her as a priority but there's gotta be a better balancing act. Ah, uh, see, I'm like kind of the complete opposite. Oh. I can't wait to get the work done so I can go and enjoy myself way, socially. It's not that I don't wanna be done. Yeah. <laughs> there's just like, I don't do what I need to do. Yeah. It's like my biggest weakness right now. You'll figure it out. It's totally. a new year. Yeah. No, you're already putting it out into the universe of what you wanna change. And she leaves and I think about it every night. About how, you can how how if she wasn't here I, when when she's gone and I'm just sitting there by myself like on the couch or working whatever because you know what the problem is because she's done with work because it's nine thirty at fucking night you should be done with work I go oh I'm still working so I don't want to go and physically even work by her because then what if she wants to talk to me and then I I got stuff to do and then I don't so I'll just stay over here and it's like actually I'm just contributing more to it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's one of those things where it's not like, uh, uh, I'm like, ah, 35 hours this week, I'm out. It's like, no, like, dude, it's 50th hour. Like, call it, call uh -huh. it, just, just go over there. It's okay. So, um, you know, we'll see how that progresses good, this good. year. I believe in it. But it's my weakness. Yeah, it's for sure my weakness. We'll check back in a year yeah. from now. Oh God, please. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, this one's definitely for me. What's the weirdest way I can describe ADHD? Um, Do you have ADHD? Uh, a painful, uh, like degree. I mean, it is. Have you always had, or obviously you've always had it, but right. like, when did you well, uh, have awareness of it? I, and to, to, to even answer that question, what's the weirdest way to describe ADHD? Maybe it's just me. I think it's one of the worst labeled diseases that currently exist, uh -huh. whether it's a disease or, or anything else, I'm not sure. But the point is I don't have an issue with being hyperactive and like attention deficit it's not that I have an issue even paying attention. The problem is when you have an ADHD, like I do anyway, it's not that I can't pay attention to something, it's that I am hyper-focused on one thing at a time. And if something else takes over that priority in my brain for a second, whatever I was just paying attention to no longer exists. Oh, uh, yeah. No, 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 I'm, I'm over here. And it's, it's actually the exact opposite. I'm hyper-focused on one thing, but that one thing can change if my brain says, oh, this is now more important. Oh, okay. oh this is now more interesting. Yeah. Which, and there's a difference between ADHD and ADD, so right? So I don't really use ADD anymore. Oh. Because I used to always call myself I, ADD because I'm, like, I'm not really that hyperactive. Like I have like a you, lot of energy, but like ADD doesn't, it's all ADHD. But because the, there's hyper focus in it. I have, I have been diagnosed with ADD. Okay. You, they'd say ADHD now. But I don't feel like I have hyper focus in a way. So, okay. So why do you think you're ADHD or ADD? because I just think that there's a lot of things going on in my brain and okay. then 
it's hard for me to really focus on it. But the stuff I do want to focus on, it is great. So I guess that is the hyper focus part of it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's just for me. I guess I was, I didn't realize it was like more of a hyper focus thing until you said it. I always thought like ADHD was more like restlessness. Like you have to like. But I think that's the biggest misconception. And I think oh. as a kid, our age in particular, they're like, oh, don't give ADHD kid any sugar because they'll be off the walls. But then now there's studies that show an ADHD kid that doesn't have enough sugar, like blood sugar going on is actually not motivated. And so now they're only prioritizing or thinking about things that really don't matter. Because uh, the, the the initiative to do the thing that it actually should be prioritized, that they know should be prioritized. Like they, they, they have the cognitive skills, like I need to do my homework. But instead, but I want to do this and I will do that. I, I will do that. I know I can do that homework. Yeah. What am I going to do right now? Right. I didn't have, I wasn't, I didn't realize I had a problem until college. Like really? where okay. I really had, like, I think it was learning a language where I was like, I really have to focus and listen. Could you because, do it? Because um, I learned like, Beginner Mandarin. Okay. Well, yeah. Wo shua zhong wen. Wo shua zhong wen. Wo ji ao. Jin sai xian. Wo shi wan he pi xiao. Or some type of person goes, we paid for English. Okay. <laughs> Don't fuck it. <laughs> but um, I, that's when I realized, oh, something isn't right. But I guess I am battling it all the time, but I'm very like ignorant about it. Really? I don't know. I just try to, if there's something that... What is this body language right now? Yeah, I've never, I never seen I'm that. I'm trying to like, yeah. I'm trying to like figure out how I think like my ADD doesn't uh, come across my, I don't think about it that much, if that makes sense. Well, I think that's part of the exact what? problem. You don't think about it. Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah. I get, I don't know. I just try to avoid tasks where it's something that I'm not that interested in. So I only try to focus on tasks that I am interested in. Yeah. But it's like, I don't have ADD when I'm like talking with people that I don't know. I get really interested in people. Like, I don't know. It's weird. I don't do, have ADD when I'm reading a book. Do, oh, so you you can easily read through. You don't get like lost in the, get to the bottom of the page and realize I just skipped over half of it. No. Oh, see, I love, that's, but if it's a book I'm assigned to read, I hate reading it. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know. I think meditation kind of helps, but like I do take medication, but like not that much. So meditation and medication. The fact that you can say that you can do meditation and that it works for you makes me feel like we are two very different brands of ADHD. Oh, meditation helps my sense of reading a lot. What do you mean? Because like when you meditate, you learn how to like shut everything off. Right. Make your thoughts just, well, observing that they're there, but refusing to react to them. Right. When I would read sometimes, I would always just be thinking about something else. And then I'm like, okay, well, yeah, we'll get to the point. Like, and then also knowing that there's just like this much other pages that you have to go through and you're like, gosh, so I think about the hours of how many, how many more days is this going to take for me to finish this? Just becoming just one with the book yep. and getting lost in that is like a form of meditation within itself. True. And I found a sense of peace in that. So like mm. sometimes when I'm, yeah, just doing certain activities, the meditation like has helped I try to think about how I think in meditation and apply that to what I'm in. And I just get in the right zone, if that makes sense. I mean, <clears throat> as someone who I, I would describe myself as selfishly curious. Like I, if someone has a, a base knowledge about something that I know nothing about, I want to know. I want them to tell me about it. And I don't care if I, I have no utility for that thing. Yes. If someone is passionate about something that I know nothing about, I am... Uh, there's a buddy of mine who's just a, a phenomenal, a, an astronomer. And this dude just knows all about space. It's not that I don't care about space. I think it's, I think it's cool. But I like, hate space. I could talk to that dude for a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because the way he just, I was, because I'll just like, well, you know, like it's like, that's like basically one of two theories of how the moon was made. I was like, what? what? You can't just say that. Yeah, Tell me more. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Shit like that is just, um, I don't know. It, I think it's just, a, I think we have terribly labeled the whole thing. Completely and overdiagnosed. You know, they say like the reason why America, we have like so much ADHD is because like our ancestors were the only people who were like ADHD enough to be like, yeah, I'll get on a boat. I'm gonna get out of here. Oh yeah. yeah. There's a, a, a new land, new I'm, opportunity. I might die. I'll figure it out when I get there. Uh, yeah. 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 I'll yeah. hop on. I mean, I think at the same time that it presents like, you know, certain challenges, there's also certain things that from, even from like a creative process, no one would, who's just completely logical ones and zeros would come up with some of the things and the way that we introduce information. Which I think is great storytelling. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well okay. said. All right, 
ladies, Valentine's Day is coming up and our next sponsor, Adore Me, is dropping a collection of brand new styles like red hot bodysuits, bold cutout bras and panties, trending corsets, panties. panties, trending corsets, lacy baby dolls and everything in between. I don't wear lingerie super often. I feel like Adore Me because, but Adore Me has styles for everyone. It's a fun excuse to dress up in something sexy and potentially surprise your partner. Adore Me values high quality fabrics paired with a big attention to details like playful embroideries, trending prints, floral lace, rich colors, and more. You can do a one-off purchase or subscribe to their super flexible VIP membership that gets you $10 off each set, access to exclusive buy one, get one free sales, and more. They're also very inclusive with size range spans from XS to 4X and we love to see it. I just got my pieces from the Valentine's Day collection and when I opened it, I literally felt sexy just by looking at it. And uh, when I tried it on, it did not disappoint. One of the best qualities about Adore Me is their commitment to sustainability, whether that means matching bra and panty sets made from recycled materials, sleepwear made from organic cotton, or swimwear that's been digitally printed to save water and energy. Do whatever you want in your Adore Me lingerie. They're here to support you. Shop now on adoreme.com. This is a good one, actually, for you in particular. Um, kind of getting into this this um, this topic of what we know we should do, what we do, the way we act, what we say, the way we actually feel. Do you think about, or do you present yourself or act differently around guys than when you're around girls? Mm, good question. Um, uh, it depends. Yeah. Um, I would say like, uh, there's definitely like, certain energies. Are we talking about like guys that I know or guys that I'm meeting or girls that I'm meeting? It's hard to say. Um, why do you ask? And how does that? Yeah. I kind of, um, I think I would definitely say like, I play up different energies when I'm with guys and then versus with, then when I'm with girls. Um, and it's weird. Cause it's like, I, I, I'm a people pleaser uh -huh. and I want people to feel comfortable. Right. And I think guys and girls have different energies. Ooh. And so you have to, um, in a way, or I like to cater to those energies. Yep. So do you do it on purpose or do you find yourself naturally doing it? Naturally doing yep. it completely. Um, I guess like also purposely, I just want people to feel comfortable yep. and that they're down to be with me. And I think I, I've, I've noticed that a lot when I've gone to um, Alabama and hung out with like Patricia's like girlfriends, cause they're not used to like this, I don't know, this LA personality kind of guy. You've been where, working with khakis and- <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, like, it's different. Uh, yeah, like I think, cause a lot of the dudes out there like in Alabama, they're they're terrified of, of it, being seen not straight yes. or, or yes. some yes. energy no, that's like exact about it. Thing. It comes down to the way they dress yep. and also just the way they act. They have this just like this kind of, I don't even want to call it an alpha male like personality because if they were alpha, you, they would be a little bit more out there. It's just safe. It's very yep. safe. And I think life's too short to be safe and just have fun. And I like uh, creating a safe space where people feel like vulnerable around you. And they're like, oh yeah, I can talk about, oh, well, Matt's here. He's good. He's good. Like, so I guess for that on a girl energy and uh, yeah, a guy energy. I just feel, I like the energy of like feeling like we're like kids again, you know? Ooh, yeah. You know, like, yeah, this is a great like, way to put that. Yeah. Like regard, like you ever like meet like an older person and you're like, they're not that like super formal. Like, you feel like you're talking to someone your age, even though they're like 30 years older than you. Yep. I like having that energy. Um, with guys. So yeah, I feel like I do switch it up in a way, but not to the point where I'm being insincere or right. being a fake version of myself. I, so I a hundred percent agree with everything you just said, except for now. And I'm catching myself in person with women that I am working with professionally. I catch myself actively, not necessarily put up a wall, but making them, uh, make it painfully obvious we're in the work environment. Right. Why do I do that? Uh, because you're a very conscious person and well, you understand- Why like, do I do that? Uh, Cause you're in a professional environment I and guess, you're, mi you're mindful of it in, in, a, in a way you're scared too. Right, I'm, I'm putting a boundary down for, for them 
but it's for me. You know what I mean? Like it's, and it's not because I, I, oh, I'm not gonna be, no, no, no. I want to make it very clear. This is the first time we're meeting in person, of course. But, it, and I noticed it the other day when I met someone that I've been working, I met two people that I've been working with for both for the same amount of time. One's a guy, one's a woman, but we'd never seen a different person. Yeah. The d- wow, dude. Oh, I mean, right. Child, whatever. Oh, it's so, it's so good to meet you. Oh. And I'm like, and I remember, I, and it wasn't, anything, there's nothing wrong with it. Literally, there's not a, a, a single thing that's actually bad about what my behavior whatsoever. In fact, it was great, but like quite professional. But now I think to myself, where else is that translating? Am I also not being um, vulnerable with new ideas and everything with is what this and well? Like, why am I putting these extra barriers so they don't need to be here? But at the same time, like, well, it's not hurting anybody with those barriers there. So it's a weird catch twenty two. Oh, because you don't because you don't want something to be um, misread. I know, and, but like, and making it seem like this guy's being way too comfortable around me. I find it unprofessional. I guess that's my fear because that's happened a thousand times when I was 23 years old, right? When I'm like, that's not what I meant. You know what I mean? Like, but now the thought of that is enough to be like, okay, no, I can't let that possibly be a thought. So now I'll do all this. But at the same time, it's like, but like, I, I, I don't know. I, and, and even the thought of like having to deal with that, I'm like, oh God, it's a nightmare. Yeah, don't change a thing. Yeah, I, I guess it's hard for me to relate to that because I haven't been in the workplace environment. When's the last time you had a nine to five corporate gig? Um, 2015, when I first moved out to LA. Yeah, worked for Apple's ad agency. Yeah. Fun? It was fun. It was fun. Um, I hated it, but- I mean, ad ad agencies are just soul sucking environments. Yeah, but it was Apple, you know, it was was iPhones. There's something about um, working for really, really, really big companies that you're also kind of um, beholden to that seems really cool on the outside. And then you get into it and you're like, but that's not right. Well, well, it's Apple, so we have no, pres- we have, we can't do anything about it. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. And uh, Apple's very like simple though with their ads. It's just like, I mean, the product speaks for itself. But, but, which different. you know, uh, as an Apple user, I get that. Yeah. Um, and then, do you feel like you overthink things? Yes, but I'm trying to get better at it. Okay, so you, you think that you overthink things? Oh yes. Oh, of course I overthink things. Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, hell, listen to me taking a shower. I am just mumbling to myself over and over, repeating every little argument I've had, hot doing the highlights and replays of every cringe thing I've done. Of course, but my biggest motto is I go, nobody gives a fuck, nobody gives a fuck. And I go, and I also say, fuck you, fuck you. I, 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 I utter that, like Zane and Todd hear me, they go, who are you arguing arguing with? Are you on the phone? And I go, no, because my overthinkingness is not me. That's like a little monkey that's crawling up on me and I acknowledge you, but I have to like give it um, a personality, like a personified way being like, nice to see you, but fuck you. Cause that's, you're not real. Right. So yeah, big overthinker. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I like, it's we. what's great about overthinking though, once you're aware of it, it's really healthy to spot it in other people and be like, mm. oh, it could be worse. So yeah. that's kind of helped me, rec- once you recognize it yourself, start recognizing it in other people. Don't make fun of them, be compassionate. Don't even get involved, but just the more you start recognizing it, because everyone's overthinking, yeah. a lot of people are. What's funny is I think the most successful people that I've ever met, like actually successful, are the ones who always know when to end a sentence. Right. Like you can always tell in my line of work, you can always tell when someone's just bullshitting you, when they could give you, they can go on and on and on and on and on about why what they're saying is the way that they're saying and how it's been the way that they're saying and how it's going to be the way they're like, that's how I know how this dude's never done before. <laughs> You're making me rethink this entire podcast. Have I been just like not no, knowing but think to about finish it. my sentences? Those, those, like every billionaire I've ever, ever interacted with in any capacity, <laughs> they, they write emails like they were, one hand on a bicycle, just like, yeah, that will work. Yes. Sent. It's like, that's that's how you have to actually, like you need to get to a place where you can be, I guess just, this is how I think. Mm-hmm. But the thought of being that blase, just almost is like, well, we probably, a little bit of punctuation wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Are you an overthinker? I used to be. Yeah. I used to spend way too much time on making sure that whatever I put forward was polished. And I don't struggle with that at all anymore. Right. And it's only been good. I can sense that, or well, not from you, but overthinking on like creative ends, like of us, like in vlog squad and stuff. Yeah. I've seen moments where I'm like, yo, 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 just stop overthinking it. It's good. Good enough. This is funny. Cause especially if you're doing something on entertainment level for comedic purposes, like once you're overthinking it, it's done. Like, 
I think that I used to be a <coughs> quasi perfectionist on things that didn't matter because I, I failed so consistently academically and all the things that when we we're a kid, they say, this is what you're supposed to do. Successful people do this. And if you're not doing this as well as other people, they're better than you. Right. And so now I get on the real world. I'm like, no, I got, I can do this. I'm going to make sure that I communicate the way. And it's like, why am I doing this? Uh -huh. Who am I competing with? Uh -huh. just, just send the email, just send the <laughs> fucking text, uh -huh. just make the call. And it's like, I think we're just so conditioned to be like, hey, this is what makes people better than others. And this is what makes people dumb or stupid or not as good. Because the way that the billionaires and the most successful people ever would have like, communicated, they would have gotten F on every fucking paper. Damn straight. Damn straight. Woo! All right, I got to find one that's like a, a cherry on the top for us. Oh, this is actually, and we're not going to end this one, but I do want to hear this one. Okay, so I think LA is maybe even weirder about this. And I know that I, how I feel about this exact thing too, but do you feel like when you're in a relationship and also if in a world where you are married, like, do you think that combining bank accounts is the healthy thing to do? I, that's a great question. I don't know. And I'm always so curious. I've never asked those questions to um, couples once yeah. they get married. Um, I think that depends on like the financial advisor and whoever you're, you're talking to and um, what they advise. Yep. Combining bank accounts, meaning like it's impossible to trace on whose money is whose. Do I think it's a good idea? What was the question? Um, your opinion on combining bank accounts after marriage? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. You, you think it's weird? Absolutely, but we got to talk about budgets and where that money goes. You can't just like always think about it as just some big bag to pull from. Right. Um, but yeah, I w I'd want my wife to have access to my bank account. And for so what is your bank account? Our bank account. Our bank account. So it's joint account. Sure. So sure. Anyway, uh, honestly, it's, so what, it? it's whatever my, the financial advisor would say we need to do. Oh, see, no. What? I, 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 if, there's a thing, if there's anything that you've been just dead wrong on all night, I think uh, it's, it's that. The financial advisor? Uh, well, not that I don't think you should have a financial advisor. I think that's great. To me, this, this, maybe it's because I've already gone through a prenup before. Oh, damn. And so I've felt what it's like to turn your life into mathematics versus, and I do mean versus theirs, and what all that means and what that does to a relationship just like emotionally, right? And I'm so glad I've done it before because now I'm not afraid of doing that at all. And do we combine, do we not do this? Whatever makes sense. Like, I, I don't know if we will combine or not, but to me, the way that like Lauren and I work, we might, we might not, probably won't for tax purposes, but like, we don't need to keep a ledger whatsoever. And if my card is by the, exit and she needs to go put gas in the car or vice versa, I'm not going to think twice. And I hope she doesn't either. Uh, you know what I mean? So wait, uh, when a prenup gets mm -hmm. signed, I, I know. So like, do, you know, do you know, do you know what goes into a prenup? I mean, oh. I, I just know that like when they divorce or when, once you get divorced, you don't get the person who has the most amount of money's money. <laughs> it's like, so it, prenups more or less is, is <laughs> it's the exit strategy before it begins. Okay. Right. So like right. you are more or less saying, Hey, whatever you're a, hey, you declare any and everything that you have, all your assets, everything that you're worth, or also in, in tandem, everything that you owe. So everything kind of just goes into a big old ledger and uh -huh. somebody else goes out big old ledger. And then there are certain things where it's like, in, in particular, people who have money from a family or they're going to inherit something in the future, or, Hey, they have the access to these shares or these will come, whatever. You basically just say, Hey, is this off the table? This is always going to be mine. You never have a right to this. And you're signing, I, I have no right to the estate. Okay. Or like everything's 50-50 or everything is um, whatever it needs to be after and up until this. And then once you have kids, then it needs to be reevaluated. It's all the things. And to me, I think at this point in time in my life, and maybe, maybe it's because I have more money now. I, I don't know. Right. But to me now it's like, I, I want to go into the relationship with Lauren knowing that that's not a secret or something that I need to tell her later because it's already out there. Like, okay, thank God that it's everything is out there as far as like what I do have to bring to the table that's like a weird conversation, but it's not a weird conversation because you're talking about it. Yeah. I get, I'm trying to think about it in Patricia's situation because, and the reason why I say the financial yeah. advisor is because I know that their family, they have a really, really good one. Yeah. And I know that there is like a bit of inheritance that comes uh 
with her. And, and it's some of that weird, comes right? from mine as well. Right. But um I but there's things I don't know right. about what she has and what's behind all of that. So I would just trust the discretion of whoever knows how those assets need to be. But, um, but let's say it's worst case scenario, right? Let's say there's something that's a secret, right? That like on either side that like, you just haven't talked about it. You didn't bring it up, but it's not a big deal. But now you haven't talked about it, whatever. Like to me n now this time around, it's like, there's no, there's no world where that's not gonna come out. So now I just like, hey, this is, the, I wanna make sure that this has just been, we've discussed. Right. Cause you can't imagine like, can you imagine getting married to somebody and then two years later finding out they have a million dollars worth of debt to something that you didn't even know. Oh, the debt. And now you're married to him and now that's actually your debt. Oh, good. Yeah. God. I don't think Patricia has debt. But like, but, what, but the worst case, she does. You would want to know that. So that way it's not like a, a, a thing that happens later. You know what I mean? Can you it's see like, it before the prenup? Of course. Well, no, the prenup discovers that. that oh, okay. Yeah. Like okay. You're, you're, your lawyers go in and literally just like, hey, everything that you've got, your taxes, your your assets, your your shares, your your like your options, your all of the shit, right? And like, it just gets it on the table and be like, hey, is this all fair game? Is it not? There's no surprises. Okay, good. Wow. And like, it's all up to grabs as far as like how you structure it. But like the point is like marriage to, to a degree is a business. Like you are going to spend money in weird ways together for the rest of your life. Oh boy. I was scared as shit of it. Like scared as shit the first time around. And by the way, it was much less complicated on my side at that point. I didn't own any businesses or anything. But now it's like, I have to think of like, I just would love to like get a quick snapshot myself of all these things. Like it's even the good, the bad, everything. I think it's just like, hey, that's not something that can be a secret anymore. All good. Yeah. But then also for some people who literally have known each other since they were 13, both broke, didn't have anything to go on. Like maybe you don't need one. I get it. I think really like, I think about it. The only way to win is if you both agree. Yeah. And if one person literally feels like, oh, I got a good deal on that one, you will lose. The person that thinks they're winning, you will lose. I, I genuinely feel like that. You cannot pull a fast one. You cannot come out ahead. You need to feel really good about what they got and what you got as well. I uh -huh. really do. Because you're both getting the same thing. Yes. It's the same fucking bed. It's the same habits. It's the same, like, that's the important thing. Like, hey, like, we both feel good. Uh -huh. I just think it's, a, uh, I, I, I wish that, this is the shit that I wish people would talk about at like 12, not like, hey, now that you're out in the world, figure this part out. I know. The, the question was for me was, um, what's it like being in a relationship with someone with anxiety? Lauren really struggles with anxiety some days and some days are great, uh -huh. but it's like a constant thing in the back of her head. What about you? Um, yeah, I struggle with anxiety a lot. Patricia, doesn't that. Okay, so you're the one with anxiety. Yeah. Okay, so. I am. Literally than the opposite version. Do you think that your partner struggles with your anxiety? Um, I wouldn't say struggles with it. I think we're like working out with, cause she doesn't identify with like what I'm like seeing. Okay. Whoa, you know, or she yeah. doesn't identify with like um my line of work, which is yep. totally okay and totally normal. I don't expect her to. Yep. Um, well, that's the important piece. Yeah. Don't you get it? No, yeah. I don't get it. That's okay. I get anxiety about like tiny like arguments though. Like, cause it just like, mm. it, make, it makes me worry that, um, so wait, are you like really mad at me? Or are you just like pissed off at me? Yeah. And then does this mean like, do I still need to be worried for the next two hours yeah. about being upset? You're, you're Lauren. Yeah, like, Lauren. like that's, it, it, a lot of that comes from like past like relationship trauma where totally. I'm like, is this the beginning of the end? Yeah. Are you now reevaluating everything? Do you not see me? Like, do you not like me in a certain way? Totally. But I've gotten so much better at How? it. Where it, I'm, meaning like I go, I, I just tell myself, Matt, like you're you're just way overthinking it and this will pass and- But like, where'd you I, learn that? Like- I therapy, would, therapy, okay. therapy, uh, therapy yeah. which I don't go to therapy anymore. And okay. Is that a I, conscious choice? No, uh, my my health insurance changed, and I was Which, gonna like, have to. End fucking, up that's the that's the crazy part for me. Just like my health insurance changed, and so now I I don't go to therapy anymore. It's like fuck. I just my past therapist couldn't accept my health yeah. insurance, and then I was like, well, I don't want to be paying more money to do this. And I liked my past therapist, but I feel like I could have got something better. Yep. Um. So, but the stuff I learned has helped me like in momentary spurts. Like, yeah, I used to have anxiety that would like fester for like three days, a week of just straight up anxiety. Wow. Like my anxious moments really only last like like 
one, two hours, mm -hmm. maybe a bad it evening a long time. or a restless sleep, but like not as bad as it used to be. Mm. Like I, in gratitude has helped me really like, like swerve anxiety big Wait, time. I don't, I don't get it. Tell me. Like, you know, those five uh, minute journals and stuff yep. where you just write down what you're grateful for every day. And sometimes I do that as a way to combat, like when I'm going to sleep, that's when my mind kicks into a hyperdrive. Oh really? Sometimes I love just getting into bed and just thinking about all the good things. Like really, that's when you really just gotta flatter yourself and be like, damn, life is good. I'm madly in love. I have a great girlfriend. I got a good amount of money. I'm in an amazing bed. I have great air conditioning. You think about all the tiny things and how blessed you are to be in your position. It makes all the tiny shit go away. Yeah. And that's just, it's, you got to rock your, it, it sound, you really got to flatter yourself. And yeah. it's, sometimes you do, you do. It's your own shit. So, okay. So Polish what do you tell, it. but then what do you tell somebody that I'm like, you're the therapist. Like, well, what do you tell somebody who feels it's, like none of those things are actually going well enough to be grateful for? <sighs> Like this I is hear someone stories. like ask my partner if they were going through anxiety and they go, yeah. well, that's not. Well, I just hear stories from people sometimes where like life is really hard. Yeah. And like life's been hard for me, don't get me wrong. I, I'll i go toe to toe, I really will. Like in my worst days, I'm like, no, my life's hard or whatever. I'm like, no, it couldn't possibly be that bad. I'm like, you have five minutes, sit down. But like, I've heard stories from people and I'm like, that's hard. And this is when my boundaries kick in. Okay. Like in a way, in a way, like, I, I, there's certain people in my life where they get that full access yeah. to me and I, I will be there for them yep. I, extremely. Like yeah. if, if, if my brother, my parents, anybody who, uh, my girlfriend, close family, I'm there for, and my close friends, my mm -hmm. roommates, the people I deal with every day, I'm going to be there for their anxiety. Right. But like, I know some people can open up and it gets deep, but I'm like, that's where you really need to talk to a professional. Right. You know? Right. No, no. Cause I do right. care, but like, that that kicks in for me where it's like, I can only do so much yeah. for this person where I can, I, I, I'll, I'll be there for them. I'll hear you out. I'm not gonna stop you. Yeah, hey, like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. Yeah, this seems like it's crossing the line. Best of luck, get out. Yeah. Oh no, God, no, too much. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean, and then there's sometimes where, you know, obviously, you know, I, I battle with anxiety, Zane battles with anxiety, Todd battles with anxiety. And there's been moments with them where, you know, I offer my support and compassion, but it gets to a point where I'm like, you really should talk to someone. Yep. And but also, that, they need to hear from someone they, they don't have any, Oh, he's just saying that. But I always love just telling people you're not alone. Like, buddy, I have been there. Like yeah. that type of energy, I it made me feel so good when moments where I was like freaking out and someone yep. just going, bud, I, I, not saying everything's fine. You're totally, no, it's not that. It's going, I get it. Yeah. I know exactly what you're feeling right now. And you're totally welcome to feel the way you feel. You are valid in that. But like, and it, and, saying like Abram, I used to be like, and I go, and I know this doesn't help. I remember when I felt like that because of this thing and what helped me was doing that. And I'm not even saying that's gonna fix you. There is no cure all, but like- You've been the there. Kind of compassion yeah. and empathy and letting other people know that you've been in that same boat has been tremendously helpful. I think it's so, we, why do we as humans always, when we get in a shitty situation, only imagine ourselves in such a terrible place when really, Math would say a lot of people have been here before. Yeah. Not even close to alone. In fact, you're more with people right now than when you're happiest by yourself. Like you really have quite a bit to relate to just about everybody else in the world right now. Yeah. I remember when I went through like my first breakup, I was like, this is just the end of the world. I can't believe it. Like all the, and my mom, I was on the phone with my mom just crying about it. And she was like, babe, I've been divorced. <laughs> I married a guy before your dad. She didn't have any kids. Nothing. Right. I wouldn't have been born if this, my mom never divorced this guy. She goes, I spent years with this person. Like, like not trying to like one up me, but she's like, I get it. It's tough. But like, and I realized I just saw my mom in a new light where I was like, wow. Yeah. I've, Damn, like yeah. that's, it's just wild. Like other people have gone through similar stuff and well, it makes either your situation feel smaller or it just makes you see it in a different light. Well, also, I think we love to relate to each other people. In, I think we love to relate to people in positive ways because it seems healthy and it is healthy, but sometimes it's okay to relate to people in the ways that you're sensitive and weak too. Like yeah. it's okay. Hey, we've both struggled with this. Doesn't mean we want to struggle anymore. Doesn't mean we want to be there but we can acknowledge that. 
Mm -hmm. People don't want to do that. And some people suck at offering any bit of compassion. Some people- I have- Very bad. I, I've sat on a couch and cried next to some friends and they've been like, this is awkward. Like, and I've not saying I expected You said that, that and I go, fucking LA. Yeah. Some, oh God, yeah. I know. Like some, and it's tough because there's going to be moments in your life and there's going to be people around because they do not care. And it's tough. And sometimes that's their boundaries where they don't want to care. You can reevaluate if you still want to have them around as an important person in your life. Um, I just learned not to go to them when I am dealing with something, you yeah. know? Oh, yes, but you, and which is also healthy. Yeah. Don't seek out something that doesn't exist. What's it like being in a relationship with someone with anxiety? Oh, yeah. So I'm Patricia. Hi. Hi. Um, you call her P Miss P? Miss P, right? Miss P, that's yeah, that's yeah. right. So I'm Miss P here. Um, it's at this point, second nature, I feel like to understand that the struggles that someone is dealing with that don't make sense in my brain, and this is the most important piece, don't need to be fixed by me. She doesn't need to be fixed. She, she doesn't need to be reassured. She doesn't need to be told that the thing that she's dealing with isn't actually a problem. She already knows that. This, that's not why she's upset. She's upset because her brain's just taken her to the worst place, even though she knows it's not rational. So me telling her, babe, you're gonna be fine, actually isn't helpful. Just fucking sitting there. Yeah. And just waiting almost for her to feel like, I know I, it, it, it would be better for her in the situation for, if I sit there and shut my fucking mouth till she goes, I know that I'm not, I know this isn't real. I'm just dealing with it. Cause then, okay, now we are on the same page. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, babe, yeah, there's, I don't know why you're upset about it. Don't, why are you anxious? But this isn't gonna be, gonna be an issue. Like, I know she knows that. And like, I think that was like the hardest, you know, you see when people to be comfortable and you want to make people to feel like they're in the right place, right? Like I, I, same. And sometimes that leads me to say the thing that I know is true or should make someone feel comfortable. But when someone is feeling anxious about something, it's not like there's some logical explanation that led them there anyway. So me saying the thing that they already know actually doesn't do anything to make them feel more comfortable. Mm. And so I think that's, if there's one thing, if like we're in the car, if we're doing this and I could tell she's just kind of going through and kind of on the edge, not like a, a full on panic attack, but like she's definitely anxious. Just be there. Don't be on your phone. Don't be here. But also don't be too forward. I'm going to sit there and stare at you. It's like, whenever you're ready, I'm going to be here. And I'm not in a hurry. And I also don't want to try and move this. You just let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Which is hard. But like, that's the only thing I've learned that actually works. It will pass. It, it will pass. It, it always does. Yeah. That's yeah. very important. I think it's odd that you were such a bold, good public speaker that struggled with overthinking and anxiety. Oh, yeah. But that's why I did it. It's an addiction. Really? Yeah. I like putting myself in like situations where, ugh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I don't know. I, I, cause I, cause after it was over, you're like, wow, I did well. I got a trophy. That was kind of fun. I want to do it again. So try it again. Yeah. And also I think sometimes, like, I, sometimes I hate like oh, th this oh, weekend, one of our friends were doing like a fake wedding for their birthday and I am an officiant. And so I need to marry them. I'm super anxious and nervous about that because now, cause I love, being an efficient for weddings, but I like it because it's sincere. I have to make it funny. And there's all these funny TikTok people there. Oh. I'm like, how funny do I need to amp this up? But then I'm like, no, well, I'm just gonna do me and it will be funny how people take it or not, but the whole bit will be funny. But I don't like, care, could, they're not gonna be my friends anymore because it wasn't funny enough. I don't need that. <laughs> boundaries, I don't wow. care. That's the, that's the theme of this episode. Yeah. Man, boy supporting boys and boundaries. Exactly. Wow, that's great. I mean, Matt, I'm curious to see what your next, you, you're an interesting, um, you're an interesting, well, you're, we've, we've already discussed, you're enigmatic with, to, a, to a T, but you're an interesting breed in the sense of you've, you've, you've come from the nine to five world. Mm -hmm. You're not so taken with Hollywood that you need to be engulfed in it at all times. Yeah. And you've seen both sides of it. So it's like 30 is going to be an interesting year for you. I know. I'm very, very excited. You nervous? Um, mm, yeah. I mean, you're, uh, you're a little, thinker. It's, a little it's bit nervous. I, there's just some uh, side projects that I would really like to see come to life, okay. especially before, you know, I want to, I want to start a family. I want to, yeah. I, I really want to. It's uh, not a side project. Yeah. Uh, sorry. It's, it's hard to put into words. Yeah. But I believe in it. Um, and I know, and I trust my gut. I just really like should put that like 30 final like push into this next year and really make it count. This is kind of one of like the biggest years where it's like, you really got to make it count. 
I think we always tell ourselves that. And then 30 goes by and you go, no, like, eh. it was fine. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. It'll, yeah. It I'm sure. I just hope that the, because the world still is so complicated right now. Like the, the, the faith in getting things on their feet is like, can it happen? Will it happen? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Despite so, society, mathematically speaking, always figuring it out. It seems like it's very far away still. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I have faith. And uh, no, there's some very exciting things coming forward for this year. How incredibly I wish vague. I could talk about yeah. that. There's one that's like so cool. And I hopefully the people will find out about it in like uh, a few months. Nah, hopefully about like two months. Two months. Like two months. March. I I'm just looking dead into the game. Yeah, like you're two grabbing months, glass guys. right now. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys like that? Grabbing glass is that? I've never heard that phrase. Oh, just grab some glass. No, just you're looking down at the, the fucking lens. If like, yeah, it's like an old school actor thing. Just like, just grab some fucking glass. I like that. No, it's so like, oh god, uh, like, yeah, a little bit. But I, also, I, so when somebody makes eye contact through the screen to you, and you're like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Okay, so uh, I'll I'll start with this in the sense of like, in my my thirty my thirtieth birthday outside of just like physical health is gonna all be all about like pushing myself to find somebody who can break me down mentally especially with the ADHD thing and like my time being spent in work and all the things that I think I suck at. Like I'm going to try and find someone who is going to be able, who I respect enough to, but am still able to be honest with to question the way I am head to toe. As a therapist? Yeah. Oh, but like more like a life coach. Go to Gary Penn. Gary Penn? Dr. Gary Penn. Yeah. If I had Dr. Gary Penn, I, I really wish I could. I don't, maybe you can afford it. How do you know Gary Payne? Uh, he's, he's Pete Holmes's, uh, you know who Pete Holmes is? Uh -huh. Comedian. I love his podcast. Um, but he talks about what he's learned from his therapist a lot. And I think he's a really good therapist. He's in Brentwood. Gary Penn, I'm coming for you. Dr. Gary Penn. Wow. All right. Well, uh, when that fixes me, great. I, I, I think I, that's my only recommendation. Of, okay. I just heard really good things about that guy. But what's funny is- Or go to Tony Robbins. Yeah. I think you're great, Jeremy Lewis. Yeah. You're, you're a pretty cool guy. If you're in my book, all seven of them. Yeah. Uh, no, I think the thing is I, I'm, I'm like prepping myself to even get to a place where I can go to one. Like I'm like, I'm trying to do all these things to just like audit the way that I am, which is already insightful. Just go. No, I, I, I the problem is I don't want to go and be a people pleaser. Well, it's also your time. You got to think like a therapist when you go to a therapist. So that's that's always like when I used to go to therapy, I'd be like, I would get as deep as I could because it's your time. It's your money. I know. It's your money. You don't want to waste that money. So I if know. you think like a therapist, get as honest and real. It's a childhood trauma shit. Get, I, that's the, I, I, but the problem is I think sometimes I genuinely forget the things and I'm like, well, that's probably what we should be talking about. Yeah. Oh, that thing? No, it, we can leave that there. That's not a problem. They're like, oh, no, uncover that thing. Uh-huh. Do it. You'll feel good about I'm it. No, I will. I, I, I've said I'm too much. I'm pumped for you. I, I, I maybe should do that too. I, to me, that's my, I, at 30, even, which is crazy to me because I'm like, I need to fucking work out and eat better and all this shit. But like, I genuinely, that's number two. To me, that's number one. I want to work with, I want to start here. Yeah. Because this is, uh, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And I like, I want to stop leaning on the way, the things that I'm really good at. And I want to actually start just really focusing on the things like, you know, you know, that this thing that you're doing could be better. And if you can do it better, it's going to make everything else that you're already good at way better. Yeah. I want to start just loving myself more, like falling back in love with just the groove of like putting out content. Cause like, I mean, like I hardly make TikToks and stuff. I love my podcast. Cause that's like my control of just me talking and stuff. Yeah. And I used to do all that Vine stuff and I was awesome. But then like, I also remember hating during that time, just being having to force to do it. Yeah. But like also just like not giving a shit and just doing it. I think I just need to be doing that more because I, I talk I talk myself out of a lot of stuff. So like, do you think you're gonna do something you start doing? You're like, oh, this isn't good and you stop. Yeah. Overthinker. Overthinker. Yeah, I get yeah, that is overthinking. But the root of it is just like, this isn't good enough and you're not how you used to be and you're just old. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I, laugh, I laugh at it where yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm such a big dummy. But I don't as, as if- Every single person who's ever known you isn't exactly the same amount older than they were when they found you when you fucking did that funny thing then. Damn straight. Everybody. Damn straight. Yeah. So who cares? So that's your 30 or that's your now or what? You got six months. Yeah. Oh yeah. So fuck off for six months, do whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then groovy Tuesday with consistent Tuesday is coming.
Groovy Tuesday. Why do you say Groovy Tuesday? Because you say Groovy Tuesday. Oh, shit. <laughs> I really thought I found someone else in the world that we, said Groovy Tuesday. We've been Tuesday. saying Groovy Tuesday ever since you've been here. Ah, I love Dude, it. Dude, that stuck with us. Groovy Tuesday, it's a, baby. It's a, it's a thing you say. I forgot. Or maybe your mom I just said I that told you all that. I you, was like. No, that stuck with us. I was like, wait, what? There's someone else out there that I says hope, it? I hope someone caught your face and you go, what? <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it, it could be a thing if you want it to be a thing. Oh, I, I make it a thing all the time, baby. Matt, I'm um, so glad that our uh, uh, masculine boys, uh, just testosterone filled uh, episode was everything that is not what I just said. That's fantastic. Jeremy, you're delightful. I'm sorry I didn't uh, drink enough of this whiskey. But you know fair, what? It's, it's, I've been, I've been, I forgot about mine as well, mostly because I could tell you want to drink the beer. So I'm, I love, I just love Pacificos. Just, They're so about, good. Listen, I'm going to drink that down. It's going to be great. It looks damn good though. No, it, but thank you. This is great. That's, that's what the glass is for. Just look good there. This is nice. So do you do a lot of one on one podcasts? On my podcast? Yeah, yeah I do. This With me so, and my manager, Mike. Not that it, I don't love when Lauren's here. I do. I just, I, you know what's funny? I enjoy not actively thinking, don't speak for at least four more back and forths because it's not your turn. Right. Shut up, Jeremy. <laughs> just don't speak. I like this setup. I want to steal this kind of setup. I wish I could come What's and just setup? record my podcast here. It's like a couch in like a corner with like another chair. It's cool, but like this type of like face really? to face with the mic and the headphones, I really do like it. I feel I, more that's like- That's actually, it's funny you say that. I also like, I don't have to, to, to share my attention with like one or two or even like Lauren here and like still cheat to camera. Right. This is actually quite nice. Yeah. There's something about just like speak. It's so funny. I, not that I don't think about the fact that we're on a podcast, but it's so interesting trying to push myself to think honestly about things that are, I guess, deep, but also don't need to be, but still are genuine. Yeah. I don't know if that sounded so stupid, but it's how I feel. I, I hear you out straight up. All right, well, this was fun. I hope that somebody else enjoyed this because I did. <laughs> I sure did too. So, uh, so you're gonna come back in what March, April when you've got something? Anytime, you can anytime. Talk. Lauren's out of town and you need another like guest. I'm down. Not guest or host, host. co-host. Wild till nine, baby. I would say Shire, Matt King. Matt King stuff will be for sure. I, and I'm also so mad. I literally I asked our producer. I was like, Hey, do we have any ad reads? I was like, I would love to do an ad read with Matt. We fucking did them all. Oh, no. They're already done. I was like, it would be fucking hilarious. Especially, can you imagine if we had like a lingerie ad? It, well, then you need to be paying me though. Well, listen. You want to get this voice behind that? Are you kidding? <laughs> Lauren's going to need to give her entire share over to you and probably maybe some <laughs> equity, the whole thing. Um, but uh, you can follow Matt in, uh, on. On Instagram. I'm going to start tweeting more. Uh, Twitter, Matt R. King. And then- On the podcast, um, for sure. And my podcast. Guys, my podcast, Hoot and a Half with Matt King. I interview tons and tons of people, creators you may know, creators you may not know on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere and everywhere there are podcasts. And I'm also on Zane and Heath Unfiltered as well. Which is massive. Yes, Huge. big time. We just hit a million subscribers. So Ooh. go check it out. Jeremy, thank anybody, you for having me. Anybody before we we um uh, we close here that you are really trying to get onto the pod this, this year? Oh, good question. I mean, we really want to get Phineas on. Yeah? Yeah. That's I, for sure I, attainable. I, I, I know. I know. We, 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 he just had us over at his Christmas party. You know what I feel about him? And I've never, I've never spent any time, never talked to him once. I seem like, he seems like someone who's really fucking cool and very aspirational and got a lot going for him. And you get him in the room and you're like, oh, I really like that guy. Oh, dude, he's awesome. Yeah. Like, it's, it's wild when you see him just on stage and stuff. You're like, wow, that's so crazy that that's you. But then that's you. Like, I don't know. Anyways, uh, he's very talented, but like, <laughs> So He's just someone I've been like, we got to get on. We got to get on. Dude, I'm so excited for that to happen. Then. Yeah. And if it definitely. doesn't happen, I'm excited if it doesn't, for the uh, journey. Yeah, for sure. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.